Chapter 4, Part 2. When Chumzuddin was quite worn out by a series of the divine manifestations and the consequent ecstasies, he used to break away, hide himself, and work as a day laborer at the water wheels of the Damascus Gardens until his equanimity would be restored. When he would return to his studies and meditations, in his supplications to God, he was constantly inquiring whether there was not in either world, corporeal and spiritual, one other saint who could bear him company and answer thereto. There came at length from the unseen world the answer that the one holy man of the whole universe who could bear him company was the Lord, you know, spiritual Lord, master, um, Jalaluddin of Rome. you know, Rumi. On receiving this answer, he set out at once from Damascus and went in quest of his object to the land of Rome, Asia Minor. And remember that Damascus is spoken of like it's a fourth holy city in Islam. Um, you know, like, like it's a place that the person can make a pilgrimage to or something, but there's a difference between historical visitations and what you do in Mecca or Medina or Jerusalem. So um, I'm, I'm not so sure that even if you look at those references that it's um, as distinct as 